My name is Terry. I'm at South Valley's Library and we are celebrating Banned Books Week and your freedom to read. Today I'm reading several passages from Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. This book has been banned or challenged in several schools over the years in regard to passages that were considered sexually offensive as well as for the tragic nature of the book, which some, might, some felt might be depressing for young readers. Um, today I'm going to read, first of all, the introduction, uh, which was by Eleanor Roosevelt, who was First Lady of the United States during the two years that Anne and her family and a few other people were in hiding in Amsterdam. Um, this is the introduction by Eleanor Roosevelt. This is a remarkable book, written by a young girl and the young are not afraid of telling the truth. It is one of the wisest and most moving commentaries on war and its impact on human beings that I have ever read. Anne Frank's account of the changes wrought upon eight people hiding out from the Nazis for two years during the occupation of Holland, living in constant fear and isolation, imprisoned not only by the terrible outward circumstances of war, but inwardly by themselves, made me intimately and shockingly aware of war's greatest evil, the degradation of the human spirit. At the same time, Anne's diary makes poignantly clear the ultimate shining nobility of that spirit. Despite the horror and the humiliation of their daily lives, these people never gave up. Anne herself, and most of all, it is her portrait which emerges so vividly and so appealingly from this book, matured very rapidly in these two years, the crucial years from 13 to 15, in which change is so swift and so difficult for every young girl. Sustained by her warmth and her wit, her intelligence and the rich resources of her inner life, Anne wrote and thought much of the time about things which very sensitive and talented adolescents without the threat of debt will write. Her relations with her parents, her developing self-awareness, the problems of growing up. These are the thoughts and expressions of a young girl living under extraordinary conditions, and for this reason her diary tells us much about ourselves and about our own children. And for this reason, too, I felt how close we all are to Anne's experience, how very much involved we are in her short life and in the entire world. Anne's diary is an appropriate monument to her fine spirit and to the spirits of those who have worked and are working still for peace. Reading it is a rich and rewarding experience. Again, the words of Eleanor Roosevelt. Now I'm going to read to you from Anne's diary itself. Um, and this entry is written before she goes into hiding. It's describing the day she received the diary whom she named Kitty um, for her 13th birthday. Sunday, 14th of June, 1942. On Friday, June 12th, I woke up at 6 o'clock, and no wonder, it was my birthday. But of course, I was not allowed to get up at that hour, so I had to control my curiosity until a quarter to 7. Then I could bear it no longer and went to the dining room where I received a warm welcome from Murchi, the cat. Soon after 7, I went to Mummy and Daddy and then to the sitting room to undo my presents. The first to greet me was you, possibly the nicest of all. Now she's talking about the diary at that point. Then on the table there were a bunch of roses, a plant, and some peonies, and more arrived during the day. I got masses of things from Mummy and Daddy and was thoroughly spoiled by various friends. Among other things, I was given camera obscura, a party game, lots of sweets, chocolates, a puzzle, a brooch, Tales and Legends of the Netherlands by Joseph Cohen, Daisy's Mountain Holiday, a terrific book, and some money. Now I can buy the myths of Greece and Rome. Grand. Then Lise called for me and we went to school. During recess, I treated everyone to sweet biscuits and then we had to go back to our lessons. Now I must stop. Bye-bye, we're going to be great pals. Okay, so then the second entry I'm going to read you is after they've gone into hiding about a week after, you can tell a little bit of the change of tone that she's not, you know, being able to see her friends or go out and do things. Um, they're getting used to this very confined space in which they're going to spend the next over two years. Saturday, 11th of July, 1942. Dear Kitty, 
Daddy, Mummy, and Margot can't get used to the sound of the Wester Torn clock yet, which tells us this, the time every quarter of an hour. I can. I loved it from the start, and especially in the night, it's like a faithful friend. I expect you will be interested to hear what it feels like to disappear. Well, all I can say is that I don't know myself yet. I don't think I shall ever feel really at home in this house, but that does not mean that I loathe it here. It is more like being on vacation in a very peculiar boarding house. Rather a mad idea, perhaps, but that is how it strikes me. The secret annex is an ideal hiding place. Although it leans to one side and is damp, You'd never find such a comfortable hiding place anywhere in Amsterdam. No, perhaps not even in the whole of Holland. Our little room looked very bare at first with nothing on the walls, but thanks to Daddy, who brought my film star collection and picture postcards on beforehand, and with the aid of a paste pot and brush, I have transformed the walls into one gigantic picture. This makes it look much more cheerful, and when the Van Dans come, We'll get some wood from the attic and make a few little cupboards for the walls and other odds and ends to make it look more lively. Margot and Mummy are a little bit better now. Mummy felt well enough to cook some soup for the first time yesterday, but then forgot all about it while she was downstairs talking, so the peas were burned to a cinder and utterly refused to leave the pan. Mr. Kupius has brought me a book called Young People's Annual. The four of us went to the private office yesterday evening and turned on the radio. I was so terribly frightened that someone might hear it that I simply begged Daddy to come upstairs with me. Mummy understood how I felt and came too. We are very nervous in other ways too that the neighbors might hear us or see something going on. We made curtains straight away on the first day. Really one can hardly call them curtains, they are just light loose strips of material, all different shapes, quality, and pattern, which Daddy and I sewed together in a most unprofessional way. These works of art are fixed in position with drawing pins, not to come down until we emerge from here. There are some large business premises on the right of us, and on the left, a furniture workshop. There is no one there after working hours, but even so, sounds could travel through the walls. We have forbidden Margot to cough at night, although she has a bad cold, and make her swallow large doses of codeine. I am looking for Tuesday when the Van Dans arrive. It will be much more fun and not so quiet. It is the silence that frightens me so in the evenings and at night. I wish like anything that one of our protectors could sleep here at night. I can't tell you how oppressive it is never to be able to go outdoors. Also, I'm very afraid that we shall be discovered and be shot. That is not exactly a pleasant prospect. We have to whisper and tread lightly during the day, otherwise the people in the warehouse might hear us. Someone is calling me. Yours, Anne. So I hope you'll be interested to read the rest of the book. It's, it's fascinating and touching, and I really appreciate your joining us today. Um, following this video, make sure to look for a related post with a link to a virtual tour of the Secret Annex. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to visit in person twice, and I picked up this replica of Anne's diary, which they have in the gift shop. So hopefully we've piqued your interest, and you'll uh, read the book and also maybe take a virtual tour of the Secret Annex. Thank you for joining us today. <music>